Hello, pre-calc kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. Today, we're going to talk about exponential functions and uh, some pretty basic things about their graphs and how we can tell what some of these things are doing, what the graphs look like, just based off of the equations. Okay, so some pretty straightforward stuff. Hopefully, a lot of it will be reviewed, but we're going to put some extra things together here that you may not have seen before. First off, general form. So just a regular general form of an exponential function is just going to be the form f of x equals a b raised to the x. We talked a little bit about this in the last lesson where we're comparing it to geometric sequences. So we're going to have this initial value a. So that's what goes here is this initial value. We have a. And then we also have to know that a cannot equal 0. If a was a 0, then f of x would just equal 0. This b to the x would cancel out. We also have to have b greater than 0 as well, because if b was less than 0, we'd have a negative number. Well, if we had a negative number, then this thing would be uh, going back and forth from positive, negative, positive, negative. That's not an exponential function. So we have to have these restrictions on it in order for it to be an exponential function. Okay, now the next part, this is not in the notes that I've put together, so uh, this I just want to talk about this for a minute. If I take the, the number a, I say number, it's, I know it's a letter. If I say take some constant a and I multiply it by the number one, what do you get? You get a again. What if I multiply it by the number one again? You'd still get a. And again, you'd still get a. All right, so this would just equal a. In other words, if I took a times, whoops, not b, times one and I raise it to the x power, no matter how many times I'm multiplying this by a, this is just always going to equal a. And so when you multiply by the number 1 over and over again, a times 1 to the x would just equal a line, this solid line here. It's not growing. It's not getting larger. It's not getting smaller. Nothing. It's just a constant. Okay, so the reason I'm showing you that is because what if, what if the b was larger than 1? Well, in that case, I would say a times something that's larger than 1. How about 1.2? Well, that is going to grow. That is larger than a. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more I multiply it by 1.2, the larger it grows. What if I take a number that is less than 1, but it can't be negative, so I have to say it's also greater than 0. So a number that's right between 0 and 1. So if I take a and multiply it by something like 1 third, and so instead of equals, let's say that it, that's going to be smaller than a. It would be a third of a precisely for this one. Okay, so when you multiply a number by between 0 and 1, it gets smaller. A will get smaller. You multiply a number larger than 1, A will get larger. And that leads us to how we tell the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay. It's going to be growing when A is greater than 0 and B is greater than 1. So if we're multiplying by that base factor, when the base is larger than 1 grows, when the base is between 0 and 1, it is decaying. Okay, so that's what this is to help you understand that. So with that, let's do some of these really easy problems. What we're trying to do is just say, is this growth or decay? So all we have to do is recognize, okay, we have the A that's positive and the B is smaller than 1 but larger than 0. So this represents decay. And now we're going to justify it. So how do we justify this? We're going to say it's because A is greater than 0 and B is in between 0 and 1. So that's how we justify that it's exponential decay. All right, let's do another one. So which one's this one? Well, the b here, the b is going to be 7 fifths, which is larger than 1, so this is exponential growth. Don't just automatically think, oh, fraction, smaller than 1. No, it's not. This one's larger than 1. And then how do we justify this? It is that, again, because a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1, we now have an exponential growth. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Just do these last two real quick and see if you get the right answer. So pause now. And there's your answers. This one's decay, this one's growth, and you've got your little justification statements there for you. All right, so pretty simple for those problems that you'll see in the practice. The next one, we're going to examine 3 times 2 raised to the x. So here's our exponential function. What are we doing to the initial value of 3 if we input a 5? So when we plug a 5 into this x right here, what happens? Well, that means 5 goes there, and that really means that there's 5 twos. So we're just going to say 3 times, 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 2, 5 times. Okay, so those, those twos. So what we're going to do with these problems is we're going backwards, the other direction. We're going to start here and come up with what the function was. So if I have 4 times 4 times 4 times 1.5, what is the function? Well, the function is going to be I have this 1.5 and I'm multiplying it by 4 three times. So that gives me a 1.5 times 4 raised to the x. And then I say that the x 
is a three. That's how we do these types of problems. Okay, so we, we recognize which one is or we is the initial value and which one is the base that we're multiplying by over and over. All right, so with that, go ahead and just pause the video real quick. Do number six. Let's see if you get the right answer. And you should have 3.2 times 0 0.8 raised to the x. So the base is 0 0.8 because the 0 0.8 is what was repeating. We we're multiplying it multiple times, in this case, particularly two times. So this is how we'd represent this output value of 0 0.8 times 3.2 times 0 0.8. Okay, next part. On our notes, we're gonna try to sketch some graphs with these characteristics going on. So if the base is greater than one, and a is zero, what does the sketch look like? Just, and we're talking about a basic sketch, okay? So just kind of draw something here that would represent, you should be able to do the first two, this first line here, because we've already practiced that. And then do it for when a is negative. What do you think the graph would look like? So if you're not too sure, do this in pencil and just give it a shot and see what you come up with here. And uh, pause the video. And here are those graphs. So we did these first two. We had where b is greater than one, it's gonna be exponential growth. Here's exponential decay. But then when a is less than zero, things change a little bit because you'd have an initial value that is negative. And if b is greater than one, that means it's going to become more and more negative as the x values increase. As the input values get larger, this will get more and more negative. Okay, so it's just this one flipped upside down. And then here, if the, uh, it's a, the same idea, we start with a negative value, an initial value that's negative, so a is less than zero, and then it's going to decay. So it's not going to be as negative, it's gonna go closer and closer to zero. Not actually get to zero, but get really close to it as you travel out. All right, so now this is really important to understand these four, because these four are the shapes of all exponential functions. All exponential functions are gonna look like one of these four. It might be shifted up or down or translated and all that different stuff, uh, maybe stretched, but it's going to be one of these variations. So what are the characteristics we can say about this? So our characteristics are these things here. The graph is always going to increase or always decrease. So let's take back and take a look at this. Look at this graph here. We're starting here, as we move to the right, it's, all, it's going up. Here, we start on the left side, we move to the right, it's then going down. Even here, it's still decreasing. It's not decreasing as much. It's getting barely, barely, barely decreasing, but it still is decreasing, getting closer and closer to zero. And then here, this one's decreasing, obviously, but then this one, or uh, yeah, this one is increasing. It's increasing more and more and more. It's getting closer to zero, but it's still gonna be increasing as you travel to the right as X values increase. Okay, so that's what this is here. It's always going to increase or decrease. In other words, we don't have extrema. It's not gonna turn around. The only extrema you'd have is if you had a closed interval, like from point A to point B or something. All right, next, the graphs are always concave up or concave down. So take a look at them. These graphs, see that? Concave up, concave up. These ones down here, concave down, concave down. So you're not gonna have a change in concavity. Okay, so the first one is increasing or decreasing. The next one's concavity. It's not gonna change. And that just means we don't have inflection points. Okay, so no inflection points to worry about. And then this last part is, uh, kind of taking this first one, increasing or decreasing, you're going to have only three answers to the end behavior. As you go, as X approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity, that's what this means when we say plus or minus, you can say if you go off to the right or off to the left, what is the graph doing? So the left side here, the Y value is approaching zero. Here, the Y value is approaching positive infinity. Okay, so here, left side, positive infinity, right side is approaching zero. And so what's happening is you're always going to have one of these three answers for your end behavior. The Y value is either going to be going up, it's either going to be going down forever to negative infinity, or the Y value is going to get arbitrarily close to zero, just get closer and closer and closer to zero. So that's what's happening here. As the left side would be getting really close to zero, the right side here would be getting really close to zero. Okay, so that's what we're doing here with end behavior. So the types of problems you'll see for this will be like this. So let's take this exponential function and we're just gonna be able to answer these quick four questions here. In order to do this, my recommendation is just draw yourself a quick little graph. So we have initial value of five and then this is decaying. So you have a positive A value and it is decaying. So the graph is going to look something like this. I would draw that because then it makes this much easier. Is the function increasing or decreasing? So as you move from left to right, the function is going to always be decreasing. And then is this function concave up 
or concave down. So you can just see from this sketch right here, that is concave up. And then what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? That means the left side. The left side of the graph, as we move off here to the left, the y value is approaching positive infinity. So we say infinity. And as the limit of the x value approaches positive infinity, so the right side, what's happening to this graph? It is approaching zero. Okay, so that's how we do these problems. So go ahead and pause the video and try number eight on your own. Let's see if you get the correct answers for that one. And there we have our answers for number eight. So I did this quick little sketch just to help me know exactly what the graph is doing. And then we just go decreasing concave down. Left side is approaching zero, right side is approaching negative infinity. All right, hopefully that was simple enough. So that's all the uh, practice problems that you're gonna have, but there will be a test prep question on this here. This is one of the uh, essential knowledges that we're supposed to cover for AP Pre-Calculus. Um, I've seen some problems in the in like AP Classroom and some other places where you might see this, some practice exams. So uh, let's let's put this in here. It's not too difficult, but it does look a little weird with all this uh, mathematical speak stuff. So let's just say we have this function g of x equals f of x plus k. Really what this is just saying is we're going to take some function f and we're adding something to it. So we're going to take some function f and we add k. So it's going to shift it up or down. And the result is a new function that we create, which is g. So when we do that, then that means if the output values of g, the new function, if the output values are proportional. Now, what's proportional means? It means if you can multiply by, by a number. Let's say we're multiplying by 2 every time to get the next number. Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, and so forth. If you can multiply by a number, the same number over and over again, over equal length input values, th then it's proportional. Okay, so if that happens, if g is proportional, then that means f, the original function, had to, has to be exponential. Okay, so if g is proportional, then the original function f is exponential. It does not work the other way around. It doesn't mean that if f is exponential, that that means we know for sure g is proportional. You can't do it that way. It has to be if we know g is proportional, then the original f had to be exponential. Okay, so hopefully that will help you out on one of the test prep problems and some other questions you may see here later in the year. Okay, that's everything. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next lesson.